Caleb Williams suffered an injury in the last game of preseason. In year three, King Sponge was thrusted into the limelight. The free agent quarterback got a win in his first ever game starting the regular season. He was a 64 overall when he came in, and now he's an 80 overall. From one-star walk-on quarterback at Boise State to UFL champion, this is King Sponge's moment he's been dreaming for, leading the Bears towards the Super Bowl. And if you recall, at the end of last episode, we got news that we'll be starting for at least the next two games. Caleb Williams is dealing with a minor injury he suffered in the final game of preseason. DeAndre Swift, a major threat on the ground last week. But the story of this one is Shadur Sanders of the New Orleans Saints going up against King Sponge of the Chicago Bears. We have been chomping at the bit for the starting role. The hard part is that Caleb Williams is in front of us on the depth chart. And Caleb Williams is no easy feat to overcome. Man's got talent, but he's been a little underwhelming for the first couple seasons. And honestly, that's where we come in. King Sponge with a lot of experience, two years in the UFL, a couple years waiting in the wings. We have the two Tools, we have the ability to make things happen. These two weeks that we have guaranteed at the starting role are going to be crucial for any hope at getting the job going forward. Cooper DeGene, the Iowa standout, made the stop, and our coach says, go for it on fourth, and we hit the tight end across the middle. Big play. Starting out week two action with a bang. I see Brock Bowers getting so open in the corner. Touchdown, baby. Oh, he stepped out. Well, that's great. We get stopped and have to settle for three. Down by four. We've been driving down this field looking for the open man. That's Zachariah Branch with the catch. But on this one, we're going to go to Branch and see if he can score with that little read option. He had dreams growing up of playing on the gridiron at the biggest stage, and we're doing it. When we were just a one-star high school recruit, we still bet on ourselves. Checking off so many professional firsts here. This has been encouraging stuff. 10 seconds left here. Just a couple more opportunities across the middle. It's Brock Bowers. We hit him. After waiting in the wings for a couple years, man, this is exactly the type of performance we needed to have. Little deja vu here. I'm going back to the play action, see if Brock Bowers can get open. He's not. I'm just going to dump it to Swift, and he does the rest. Chadur Sanders has his guys playing inspired football right now because they've been able to score two touchdowns and get right back in it. If I can just finish this drive off with a score, we should be in the driver's seat for the win. And look at DJ Moore, man. So inspirational. Bears fans, how many times do you get to hear this? Your overpowered offense was too much to stop today. Chicago moves to 2-0 and oh, thanks to King Sponge and a masterclass performance. Shadur Sanders could not keep up. Week three, we're in Miami. Michael Penix Jr., the UW product, is the quarterback for the Dolphins. He's got Tyreek to throw to. We need to soak up this opportunity because honestly, this may be the last game we get to play in for a little while. Caleb Williams is cleared and ready to go for next week. Yeah, ain't gonna lie, we love our tight end room out here and we're gonna spread the love, let Brock Bowers get something too. That one-two punch is filthy. A little bit tougher sledding in this one so far, but we'll dump it out to Swift, see if he can get that screen up the field. Got the boys just a couple yards out. Hand off. Swift, get in there. This should be all tied up now. With just one minute left in the game, I'm ready to be a hero. And we got so much time. Really, I got to give kudos to the offensive line. They've been holding up really well in this one. If I can just get the team down into field goal position, that'll be all she wrote. So on the RPO, we're going to dump it out to Komet once more. And the tight end is going to keep rumbling. With just 10 seconds left, let's hand it off before taking a timeout. Try to get a couple more yards. The snap, the kick. It is good. The Bears win. Last second thriller there. Chicago comes out on top. King Sponge was able to drive down the field and get us to a position to win. We are 3-0 on a young season. And man, oh man, number nine has come to play. Can't complain with 249-2 and two and the win. Two teams sitting at 3-0 and in the young season going to face off here in week four. But you see that right. Caleb Williams is back and they gave him the starting job again. So I guess it was just the tip of the cap to King Sponge. And a thanks for going 3-0. and Now here's the bench. Ain't gonna lie, I feel a bit like chopped liver, like all my contributions were for nothing if they're just gonna hose me like this. Like Caleb Williams is totally a good player, I get that, but man, I just feel like we deserve a starting role somewhere at least. Bears now are up to 4-0, 26-20 was the final in this one, and Caleb Williams got it done. So it looks like I'm gonna be on the bench for the foreseeable future. Fast forward to the end of the season, Caleb Williams was pretty efficient, but only 2,000 passing yards in the remaining 14 games. King Sponge, on the other hand, compiled 60% of what Caleb Williams was able to do in just three games. Nonetheless, we made the playoffs that are in the wild card round against the Cowboys. So it's only fair I get to keep the bench warm in the playoffs as well. Definitely going to need to have a talk with the front office here after the season. But for now, go Bears. Let's take down them boys. We're in Jerry's world. Dak Prescott still hanging in there. This would be big for Caleb Williams if he can make a playoff run. But I got to believe that the office is not happy about low pass production the last three years. Wait a minute. Is that 21 in the backfield? I know that's not Zeke. 
That must be Derrick Henry out there. Well, the Cowboys are up 17 to 7. Caleb Williams in the offense been stuttering. And officially, the Chicago Bears are first round exits. It got close at the end, but it didn't matter. Dak and the boys hold on 26 21. Losing to them boys in the first round is almost like a surefire thing that you'll know heads are about to roll. Well, although losing the playoffs stings, the Cowboys went on and won the Super Bowl against the Chiefs. NFL draft came and went. I'm not going to lie, this team is looking good. Gil Moore and Vaughn, two hidden dev traits picked up in the draft, will plug in at positions of need. This Chicago Bears team is full of stars. Just one problem, they got my boy King Sponge still second in the depth chart. Another preseason in the books, and I'm sick and tired of having to prove myself. I was preseason player of the year two years ago. So as much as I'm excited about the Bears team, I'm going to request a trade. I'm 27 years old. I'm not getting any younger. And while the front office starts ironing out those details, let's take a look at week one, the season opener, Bears, Eagles. Week one, Caleb Williams drops back. He's looking for an open receiver. He's got a man. It's Brian Thomas on the sidelines. And with that big catch, the Bears are looking to score only down 35 to 3. Despite a valiant attempt from Caleb Williams at the end, this game was wraps. In week one, Jalen Hurts cooked us 307 yards, five touchdowns. Caleb Williams, not so much. A measly 160 in one touchdown. Ladies and gentlemen, it is finished. The trade was made. We are staying in Chicago? That's right. The front office got busy and they sent Caleb Williams to New England after a brutal after a brutal home opener and abysmal passing stats the last three years. They're finally giving King Sponge his opportunity. Not only are we the QB, they brought in Bijan Robinson for us. Bijan Robinson, 96 overall running back. That will be a difference maker. And of course, how can I forget about big Will Campbell? But wait, it gets better. We brought in Walter Nolan too and third string cornerback Dalen Evans. Everett from Georgia. Where one quarterback leaves, another joins us. Jordan Travis is the backup. I am pumped up for this one. My first start in year four. Waiting in the wings no longer. It is King Sponge's time to shine. Let's play some football. And of course, I got to pound this to home with Bijan Robinson up the middle. That man's going to be nifty for us. Having a tight end for a security blanket is one of the best things that can happen to you. And we got two of them out here. Let's go. Hasn't been all sunshine and rainbows, but we have a real opportunity here. Let's go right back to our tight end. There he is. Touchdown, baby. Bijan Robinson may be on the team, but we still got guys like DeAndre Swift to still get in there and make some plays out of the backfield. And yeah, DeAndre Swift is still very much a threat as he's going to get open here once more, wreaking havoc out of the backfield and down the field. I need to put the offense on my back this drive because we need points. And Bijan, he's open. We got him. There we go, making a difference on his new team. And with one minute left in the game, it literally comes all down to this. Cole Komet, he bounces off the tackler. Big play. The penalty pushed it back to a 60-yarder. That pass got it to 51. And now that run has got it to a reasonable 39. And there you have have it folks king sponge in year four gets the start against the ravens brings us a victory 320 passing yards three touchdowns we did throw one in but all in all this was a good performance on the road against san francisco never an easy task and it's going to be difficult niners hang on and win so unfortunately we're going to fall and go one and two in the early season man i talked a big game and after four years in the league i expected better numbers than this not bad by any means but when you compare it to caleb williams production it's not all that much different. My first year at the helm, we finished eight and nine and don't make the playoffs. So I'm going to have to put in a lot of work this off season. Maybe even go train with Patty Mahomes a little bit. I don't know. Heck, I'll probably just buy the TB12 method and that should do me right. 2027 season recap and geez. All right. Dallas Cowboys go back to back. Talk about a successful preseason and off season going into year five. We're up to 88 overall. The TB12 method kicked in nicely. In year five, the margin for error is slim. We can't trip up now or else they're going to go looking for a replacement. If you were around for King Sponge UFL days, you would know that the Vikings actually gave King Sponge his initial chance and cut him after only one preseason game. Some offseason shakeup here. It looks like we lost Cole Komet, and that's a bummer. So we're going to have to rely on guys like DJ Moore, who's still hanging out here and getting touchdowns. This is 100% a revenge game, and I'm ready to cook. Brock Bowers, come through for me, my man. Going to need the whole squad to step up if we're going to beat the Vikings and if we're going to make a run. I'm going to toss the crack out to Bijan Robinson. And he's going to run for it. And I think he's got it. Touchdown. 
And I absolutely love the fact that we're up big right now and we're just padding it on. Just under three minutes left in this one. Even though we're up by two touchdowns, it ain't over until it's over. Aggressive play calling. We felt like we had nothing to lose. Let's give it to Bijan to do the rest and score. We're up by three touchdowns. This one's over. The season opener against the Vikings is going King Sponge's way. He leads the Bears to victory. Another year as the franchise quarterback, 3,050 yards, 21 touchdowns to one end, and then also tacked on 790 yards on the ground. And yeah, oof, it looks like Chicago really was the problem as Caleb Williams is flourishing in New England. 4,000 yards, 32 touchdown passes. Well, it looks like the dream of winning a playoff game here in Chicago is going to probably be not happening with, uh, well, Eagles destroying us. Yeah, everything we did today was in vain. I don't think I've ever been more humiliated in a game than this. 47 points the Eagles scored. 2028 was not our year. Chargers end up taking the Super Bowl home. Bro, hold the phone. This next year, we popped off. We changed the scheme up a little bit, and wow, it paid dividends. This year feels like the year for King Sponge to cement himself in NFL history. The NFC playoffs run through Chicago. King Sponge is ready to run it back here against the Bucks. It's surprising to see the production that we're having this year because we've lost even more players. There's no longer Bowers on the team. You may not be familiar with Cameron Stewart, but trust me, he was a speedster from like the 2027 draft. Something's jacked up with Madden settings, and man, it's a bummer to see because we're on a run this year. Holy injuries. Yeah, there's something off with stamina, fatigue, whatever it is. I hope we can get through this game in one piece because this is concerning stuff, but oh my goodness, what a touchdown. My guess is this fatigue bug is also affecting the defense, and that is extremely unfortunate because the Bucks were able to score, but we score right back. Literally feels like there's pressure to score each and every drive when you got backups in and the defense faltering. There's no room for mistakes, and we just made one. Bro, we're down by seven. It literally feels like the Eagles playoff game from last year. We just can't keep up because of the, the bug. This is unbelievably difficult with what's going on right now. Thankfully, we can cash in with a touchdown, but there's a minute left, and we're losing. All right, this is getting a little out of pocket right now. I don't think the Bucks should have beat us as the one seed. We got handled because, uh, well, it definitely got wacky and wild. The 2029 season recap, the Panthers are Super Bowl champions. King Sponge really starting to dial up a notch late in his career here. 4,300 yards, 33 touchdowns this season, and the tight end from Alabama put up a monster season this year. 1,200 yards and 13 touchdowns. At 11 and 6, we finally got another crack into the playoffs. Our team is an 85 overall, and I feel like we're on the decline a bit. So it's this year or bust. First drive of the game quickly down into the red zone. We got Cameron Stewart underneath here. We're just that much closer. It's playoff football. It's fourth down. I'm going to go for it because I think we have a chance here. And that is Calhoun, the stud tight end, keeping the feet in bounds. Touchdown. It's the playoffs. We can't afford to get down, but we got a streaking receiver there. Hauls it in. Yes, sir, Branch. First and goal, 15 seconds left. I'll give it to Bijan, see if he can cash in. He does. It's a battle in the wild card right now. We're down by three, but that touchdown will get us right back in it. When an opportunity presents itself to get some insurance points, that is what you do. You get them insurance points. Good work moving it down the field. We can ice out the rest of this game, and that first down will do it. Well, I misspoke here because that was not going to do it. We have to fight for the last second here. Throw one up to Bijan. It's not going to work. Overtime football. Playoff football, the stakes are super high right now, and I think we might have the connection we need. Touchdown. Oh, man. OT thriller. Touchdown, the Bears. Bryce Young is literally exploiting our defense right now as we're going to have to do this all over again. Double OT. Second and 17. Man, that is a long way to go, but thankfully, in through the zone coverage, pierced it for a big play. Refusing to be deterred. It's third down. I think we can float this one up and over. It's hanging up there for so long. A little too long. Fourth down. The big field goal was enough. We survive in double overtime. That was insane wild card football. We needed the dub here. King's Punch able to check off a playoff victory, his first ever one. Now it's the divisional round, and you saw the scene. It looks like a snowy Chicago going up against Shadur Sanders and the Saints again. These type of games, I love to just kick back, relax, and watch a snow game in the NFL. It's always, oh man, and as I was yapping, Branch got hurt. Couple field goals so far through this one. We're down by a single point, but on the run, I think we got him. Let's let Bijan run this one in i think he can do it if he just gets the protection nah third and goal why not try it again Bijan, this time up the middle we got it should earth sanders in the saints an absolute costly turnover in the red zone they were driving down the field to score with a minute left since they turned it over we can just run the clock out and use up all their timeouts in Bijan. what a juke third and nine Bijan, one more dose up the middle he breaks through it's officially over king sponge victory formation 
all wraps here. Bears 20, Saints 16. We're advancing to the next round. We're getting hot at the right time, and we just got to keep the mojo up here against the box. This time for the NFC Conference Championship, we're on the road. Defense was quickly in trouble, giving up a touchdown, and we're down, but I'm able to strike right back to Calhoun. Big touchdown to even this one out. See if Wilburn can pick up a first down here. He sure can. A good spot to be in here at the end of the first quarter going for the end zone. Calhoun is a target machine and he's got hands of glue. You know, I never gave the Bucks a full assessment, but they're cooking us right now and it's actually a bit wild. 20 points already in the first half and that means I'm forced to play catch up toe for toe here. Throwing it out to our speed threat. Cameron Stewart's got the easy touchdown. He had his man beat. King Sponge has any nerves, he better not show him now because we have to step up with a three-point deficit minute to go. I don't want to just settle for three. I think I just want to go for the win. You feel me? I think we still got room to sprinkle in a handoff here or two. It might add a good wrinkle to the offense. I haven't seen Bijan Robinson all game, so I really hope he didn't get injured. This is literally the definition of crunch time with 20 seconds left. We're going out to Calhoun and he's got it. Oh my goodness, I love that tight end. And it's officially in the books. We make the final stand, 38-34. Chicago's going to the Super Bowl. What a ride it has been. Man, this Jets team has been red hot and they're at 90 overall. This is a frightening opponent. But no worries, we're ready for the Super Bowl. King Sponge has been prepping his whole life for this. The man has been dreaming of this day since he was in high school and only rated a one-star recruit. Still dreaming of it as he worked his way through Boise State and still dreaming of it when he had to go through the UFL to get another chance to be in the pros. Without further ado, it's Super Bowl Sunday. It's time for a Jets Bears matchup. This is a crazy matchup that you would never see in real life today. King Sponge finally has a star under his name. It took seven years in the league, but we finally have it. And on the first play of the Super Bowl, we're throwing a interception across the middle. Unbelievable way to start. But the defense playing tough early. One for five so far. Already down 7-0 in the Super Bowl. We have to come through here. And I'm going to see an open tight end spring loose. And he's got so much space in front of him. That could go all the way. Not quite. Picked a pretty good time to get the star under his name because it's the Super Bowl and there's really no bigger stage than this so it's all down to this we're into the end zone we're tying this thing up the bears defense comes through with a big turnover and we got some motion out here dropped so many obstacles in our way but we have to finish and finish this drive with a touchdown calhoun again this guy is a monster back and forth this battle's been going it is fourth quarter action we're down by three and oh that's a big breakup shiloh sanders with the defense defense held giving us another chance here on offense we need to come through for those guys no breakup on that play we have life and i'm gonna jump it out to calhoun second and inches right back to the tight end this time that's our backup making the play just about two minutes left we can finish it off here with a big touchdown he's got a step calhoun is a monster i can't believe how much separation this guy gets right over shiloh with 44 seconds left, adversity has striked, and Calhoun's going to be the one to bring us down this field again. King Sponge literally trying to muster up everything he's got to be a hero, and we get intercepted. And heartbreak. This is the worst possible ending I could think of. The New York Jets win the Super Bowl. Chicago Bears fall, and King Sponge worked so hard for this and fell short still a good sport dapping up the other team but inside he's crushed he's broken he's destroyed all the hard work all the blood sweat and tears the bears are on the decline this team is not going to be in shambles next year because people are getting older overalls are decreasing the contracts are not the same so that was probably the last of a closing window jets on the other hand look like a powerhouse did what we could <sighs> We put up a fight in this one, but the costly pick at the end was just a little too much. 